Today is the day you're going to learn how to make kebab and you'll be so surprised how easy it is. If you're ready, we can start. Today we're going to make Adana kebab on the shish, which is tasty, a bit spicy. And together with that, we're going to have some red onions with sumac and parsley, which is a great combination when you wrap the kebab around the lavash. To make the Adana kebab is going to take just one minute. But I should say what I did, I took out some parts, sometimes the ingredient or a technique from the original recipe and replaced it with Refika tips to make it easily applicable everywhere in the world and the ingredients are really easy to find. This kebab is for two people, so we're going to need 250 grams of ground beef. But the ground beef, I have to tell you, when you go to butcher, the butcher grinds the meat for two times usually. The minced meat, round turkey is there. But for the burgers, it's just grinded for once. I have done both to show you the difference. It's almost the same meat, the same fattiness, but this is like thinner pieces. This is bigger chunks. This makes the meat juicier. When you buy meat for a burger, you buy this one time grounded beef. And which part? Which part of the animal should it be? Usually the classic Adana has 40% lamb and 60% beef. But we're going to do it directly from beef and the part that we are going to use is around the ribs. I have taken a piece again from the butcher. You know the ribs, they cannot move and they have a lot of fattiness inside. So if a meat does not move, then the muscles, the meat is going to be soft. And if it is more fat, it becomes tastier. Like the marbled entrecot is like the best. It's better than any of the beef. The same idea is. So what they do, they cut the pieces which are stuck around the rib. It's these pieces. And when you grind it, it's the perfect meat for the burgers and the kebabs. So the beef is that. We're going to use 250 grams of single time grinded meat. The fattiness is here. We're going to mix some ingredients with it. Whatever chili you have, the chunkier the piece, the better. First, I'm going to cut this one. For this recipe, I'm not going to use the seeds. Why? Because I can put the seeds to the soil and I don't want it to look seedy when I make the kebab. It's just something visual. Something not visual, taste. not the taste. Actually, the red peppers are like when you cut them in chunks and they start to get older. So if you can dry your own peppers and use them in your recipes, it's going to be always more wonderful. So I've cut them in small chunks, but because they're so dry, it won't be easy for the meat to soak the taste. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put a few drops of hot water and it will come alive. Because when you dry, you evaporate the water basically. So else than the red pepper, I'm going to use two more different types of peppers. Originally, these green peppers should be hot, but I wasn't able to find a really hot green pepper. So these are quite mild. I'm going to add some dried red pepper, like chili flakes, to adjust the taste. And also a little, maybe a Mexican pepper would do great. Really hot one, but I still, again, wasn't able to find. So I'm going to add for the color, add this much, like one third of pepper like this. And two garlics. I'm going to very finely chop these. I'm going to cut the like thicker parts in half and continue chopping like this. I know this chopping is what gives it flavor to the meat, but can it be done in a machine? Yes. Normally, like a classic adana, you wouldn't have the minced meat. You would have mm -hmm. chunks of meat and you add these ingredients and you would chop them all together. So the flavors... Uh, yeah. Together. I'm going to do a little bit of it a little later. For this recipe, I'm going to use two cloves of garlic, but this one is rather big, but I wanted garlic for like a general taste. Please use two medium-sized garlic cloves. Now the fun part. I combine the peppers and the garlic and go over everything together like this to make it finer. You collect everything and like make it square and then start one side, your hand is on the knife and you make a one third of a circle and then you collect it again and repeat. 
This way all the tastes mix. And to this, before I touch the meat, I'm going to add a tablespoon of red flake pepper. But if you use the green pepper hot, add half a teaspoon. And I also add this mixture. Also a teaspoon of salt. Now I add the meat in the middle. And with my knife, go over. If this seems difficult, then they can all put this into the machine. If you put the meat to the machine, you'll ruin it. If you want to make it closer to the original, you put chunks of meat and do this. Normally, you would net the meat, but what you do with your knife, you chop the meat and then collect it in such a way it's like netted. After two minutes, the meat is ready and even from the smell, you can understand that all the taste came to bind. Now, time to put it on the shish. For the shish, the classic Adana kebab has a shish like this, like wide. I'm going to show you how it works. You put it like this and then you have this wide kebab, which is longer like this. But because I know that you won't be able to find this shish, what you can do first, a best thing is maybe if you have a kid and you check her throat with that, the wooden things, you can use those. And they're sold in the pharmacies everywhere. Or you can use wooden shishes, which is like thin wood, sold again in the supermarkets, or straight ones. Anything that you, you have as a shish, you can use, but with the wood ones, before I started, I soaked them in water so that the sides won't burn on fire. So, I'm going to probably make four. I'm going to divide everything like this. Two for each person. First, I make a patty like this. I'm sure that there's no hole in the middle or something. Then, I put my wooden shish in the middle like this. And then slowly push it from top to bottom with my fingers, but not so hard. If you find it like it's kind of like falling apart, put it in the refrigerator for 15 minutes. I know we have followers from India, Texas, Pakistan who loves to deal with meat and it's very hot there. So you can do that. And if it becomes sticky on your hand, have an iced water. And with that iced water, wet your hand for the stickiness. I left like three centimeters from the top and the bottom. With my middle finger, what I did was to make it flat, not round. The surface area increases. Why it should be flat, not round? Because our shish is flat. It's going to cook better like this. Four of my Adana kebabs are ready. I'm going to put them in the refrigerator for 10 minutes because it's rather hot right now. And I'm going to clean up and put my fire on and then cook. Where does the good kebab get cooked in? In a charcoal, usually maybe in, in the middle of a, this restaurant where you can see the guy who's cooking it and the smell gets all around. It's amazing. But of course, we don't have that luxury in our homes. But what we do have is we have our cast iron pans. And I have this Refika technique where you use your cast iron as if you're on a grill. To understand whether our pan is hot enough, what I do, I take a drop of water. And if it boils slowly like sizzles, it's not still hot enough. What it has to do is just like put and it should evaporate immediately. Now. It's really okay. Because I had this round cast iron, my shishes are shorter. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put something like this, which wouldn't get affected from heat. And I put the shish. Before you just put, go once again over, for example, this one opened like this. But if you have too much of that everywhere in all the shishes, you should reconsider and knead a bit more and put it in the refrigerator. Why am I doing this like that? Normally a shish would never touch a pan. And when a kebab touches the pan, it's never the same. It's oil, before it's about to drop, we have to turn it so that the water and the fat stays within the shish. So unlike the steak, every other minute we're going to turn this on this side, on that side. 
So in five to six minutes, it's going to be ready. I'm going to clean my hands and make the side salad of onions and sumac. When it touches the pan, it becomes kraftenol. Oh yes. I have two red onions. Is it necessary? The taste is much better with these, the raw taste. The sweetness is really different. The sourness is a little bit more in the red. We call this a piaz cut, which is like half circles. This is by far the <laughs> bitterest onion so far. It's been 45 seconds, one, one, less than one minute. Look, it started to get cooked. I have to tell you that when you're doing this, you have to turn on the aspirator. Otherwise, it's going to ring the fire alarms. For the salad, here I have my small parsley. I'm not going to use all of them. Some of them are from the wash, some of them from the market. I'm going to collect everything like this and then, not so thinly, not so coarsely, chop. After I chop the parsley, I bring back the onions, put a bit of salt to the onions. What I'm going to do with the salt, I'm going to squeeze them so that they're hard, strong flavors. They're almost like chips. I make them lose that chips content and get mixed up. And then I mix it up with the parsley. I have already put a lot of salt for the onions. The salt also helps that and also makes this salad mix. To this, I'm going to add a bit of olive oil, not so much for the flavors to pass, and one and a half tablespoon of sumac. And mix it with your hand like this. This is heaven on earth and so easy to make. You can make this for tacos, eat it with chicken, biryani, aman. It would be amazing. Now it's been about four minutes, five minutes, they are still on. But because they are not touching the heat, they are almost done, not done totally. I have this thin lavash, which I'm going to use. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put this to warm it up and to soak the flavor. The bread is also very important. All done. I've turned off the heat. This one, this bread, Bahar, goes for you. I've seen myself in the hummus video. Pickles, pickles is so dominant. Mm. Oof, it's very creamy. So I'm going to make up for it. So first, it's going to be for you. The salad comes like this. Then your meat comes. Here comes the second one. Yeah! Wow, I am so lucky. Okay, I'm going to make myself another one. For serving, anything you can use even a tray or something. Add your sumac and parsley mixture and your kebabs. Now, when you're eating it, if you cannot find, let's say, lavash like this, I know there are lots of great messages. I'm going to make this bread myself on the channel. But if you cannot find it, you can use a tortilla bread. It's going to be a little thicker, but it's also wonderful. You make, you put the kebab in the middle like this, and then you pull it. Here it comes. And make a durum. Wrap it around. Wow. It's called durum, durmek. There's heaven on earth, and this is one of them. You got to eat this first. You have to eat it. I ate it again. Mm, it's very juicy. It's not very hot. The onions are wonderful. Onions are shooting. I learned it all. Ah, fiet also. You should definitely do it at home. It's worth the effort. Thank you for everything, all your support. I read all your messages and it makes me proud, makes me feel great. Please tell me anything you want me to make on this channel. If I can, I will definitely do it. Thank you so much. Hope to see you soon.